I made over $20 million selling on Amazon and I started with just $500. And Michael's gonna share with you exactly what he sells on Amazon, how he did it, and at the end of the video, he's gonna share with you the three biggest mistakes that he made, including one mistake that cost him over $1 million. So smash the like button because Michael's gonna share with you how to start your own online business. Michael, how did you start your Amazon business? So I was in school full time, a very intense school from like 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I knew I wanted to build a real business. There was these brothers in my community that were doing nine figures and they were in their 20s. So right. I was like, I just have to learn from them. So I started learning from them and I took whatever time I had between breakfast, lunch, dinner, after school for hours to late in the night to really start figuring out the business and start this. And you started your first product with just $500. How did you find this product? So I knew that there were so many products you could sell. And I started, as I started doing my research, I saw there were so many different categories and so many different products. I was very passionate about fitness at the time and I was working with my brother and he was very passionate about fitness too. So we decided, you know what? We're gonna actually try to find something in fitness because I'm like, I wanna not just sell a product. I wanna be able to build a story around the product. I wanna be able to build a brand eventually. And you're right, right now I'm only starting with $500, but it's my first foot forward. And I wanted to really make sure that I had that. So I started just looking through different fitness products. And what came up on Alibaba was this product, which was very unique. It was, I, I didn't see something like this. And then I saw on Amazon that they were, there was one seller selling it and it was already proven a little bit, but there weren't a lot of people selling it. And it was very unique. So I was like, this could be a really interesting product to do. And it has good market opportunity. So then you went to Alibaba and you bought a sample from the manufacturer. How much did that sample cost? So the sample costed around 30 bucks and we did like DHL express shipping. So it came in like a week and we were able to like make decisions pretty quickly that like, oh, we saw like right away, the sample was really good. It was a couple different things that we thought like maybe could be improved. But you know, what I always say is like over time when you're selling a product, you know, you're selling it for years, like over time you can make those small improvements, but we just went with that sample. So then you ended up doing a production run. How many units did you, did you get manufactured and how much did that cost you? So the first order, we got a hundred units manufactured and it costed around $300 for the, for the products to get produced and then another $150 in shipping. So in total, when you had everything up, it was just about 500 bucks to get started on Amazon. So you put this product on Amazon, all hundred units and how to do. So I remember I was in school at the time when it was listed and we weren't allowed to have our phones out in class. I went to the bathroom to check. And I remember by like lunchtime already, a ton of the units were sold. And I like, based on the amount, I think it was like, maybe it was like 15 units already sold that day. And I realized like, I have less than a week of stock with this. Wow. So um, yeah, it ended up running out of stock and you know, we, we made the order right away that night. So you took the profit from that first run and you, ended up ordering another production run of a thousand units. How much did that next a thousand units cost you? So for the next thousand units, we got it cheaper because usually by quantities you get discounts. So we think we paid $2,500 for the production and then we paid um, shipping is also cheaper because it's bigger boxes and everything like that. So I think it might've been like $500 in shipping. And for the second production run, you also had some other costs. I know that you ended up getting a logo and like better design for the product. How much did that cost? So for the for that design, we actually paid five bucks for the logo and getting all that done. We won on Fiverr, yeah. found a designer and just started communicating with them. And then we paid around like $30 to get the rest of the images done by another designer on Fiverr. And on top of that, I know you also got a trademark. How much did that cost and what was that process like? So for our trademark, we paid $1,000 to have a legal firm um, do it, but you could do it yourself for a few hundred dollars. So at this point, you're still in high school. You just spent over $3,000 for your second production run here. How are you feeling? I was feeling really excited because I had the adrenaline rush from the first run and I wasn't so to say nervous that it wasn't going to sell because I saw it sell so quickly. So I knew that if I just put more effort in and get smarter about it and put a little more energy into it, it could do much, much better. So I was just trying to do all the right steps, um, but I wasn't so nervous because I'm like, I saw it selling already. And so I had that kind of faith. This is a key principle for entrepreneurship test. Try out a little something, dip your toe in the water. And if it works, you're gonna be super excited and you're gonna be able to spend more money to get those bigger results. And then you took the profit from this next production run, you bought more inventory, but you also did something else that I think enhanced the brand. What would you do to be able to enhance the brand? So because this is a space I was really passionate about, I really wanted to do more and really build a brand. So what we did is we actually scheduled a photo shoot where we got videographer, photographers, models, and we were able to actually shoot a lot of content with our products, not just 
tin hats are listing, but to really build a brand off of that. So that was really took our brand to the next level. And we were able to work with all those creatives to create a lot of very unique assets for our brand. And it paid off because in your first year, you ended up doing over $300,000 in sales. And once you subtract out all your product costs, all the shipping, all the Amazon FBA selling fees and pick and pack fees and all that stuff, you ended up doing a profit of $120,000 in your first year selling on Amazon. And you were still in high school at that point. Like, what yeah. were you thinking? That's more than most people make as an adult. It felt so good because it's like, you don't really have that much to spend it on. You can't even like, there was like limited things you could spend it on when you're that young. So it was like, it, just see the money coming in and it felt really good that also there was so much opportunity of what to invest it in because there's so much opportunity on the platform. So it's like, wow, I could do this much more. I could, I could do this at a much bigger scale. And you just start getting exposed to bigger ideas and bigger opportunities where in the beginning, you don't even think they're possible. So you don't even think about them. And that brings us to your second year selling on Amazon. And you're still in high school at this point, And you ended up having one mistake that cost you $70,000. Do you want to talk about what that mistake was and maybe a warning for everybody at home? Yeah, so at the time, one of the tactics people were using to launch our products on Amazon was that you give out a code for like 99% off um, and you get a lot of purchases like that and you get ranked. So by mistake, we made a, a code instead of making them a unique code, so people can only use them once, we made like a group code so it could be used multiple times and we didn't put a limit on it. And, um, and I wasn't checking my phone, it was like on a Saturday. And Saturday night I checked my phone and I see there's like a ridiculous amount in sales and the product got sold out because the code got posted on some viral like promo site. And you know, we, it, it got ranked in the highest position, but it ran out of stock because it sold so many. So you ended up losing probably at least $70,000. How did that feel to be in high school to lose out on $70,000 again, more than most people make in a year? So it was at that point, I was like, I was really kind of taken aback for a little bit. And then I just realized that, you know, that's what comes with a business opportunity like this. You know, there's a lot of opportunity. You have to take risks. Uh, but you know, you have to bounce back for them. So, you know, we just right away went into just, you know, our next move, how do we get this product back in stock? What are we going to do to launch it again? And yeah, we just have to keep pushing forward. And it paid off because in your second year selling on Amazon, you did over a million dollars in sales, still in high school and over $400,000 in profit. Second year ever selling on Amazon. How are you feeling at this point? You gotta be pumped. So this is when I realized like this could be a legitimate business yeah. and this could be something that could grow into something much, much larger. At 300,000 is still a very legitimate business, but I realized this is a chance for me to build national brands. Like this is some, an opportunity where there's so much opportunity with. So I started getting very excited about that opportunity. Everything seemed great, but then in your third year selling on Amazon, your account got suspended. What was that like? What happened? How can people at home avoid something like this? Yeah, that was a pretty traumatizing experience. I feel like my heartbeat never went as fast. <laughs> um, and it's like the email every Amazon seller dreads. But, you know, I think if you really just closely and strictly follow a TOS terms and service, you're not going to usually come across it and usually able to get your account back. But for us, what happened was Amazon has a lot of rules um, on what, how you could ask for reviews and they keep evolving those rules. And, you know, we always had inserts in our products asking for reviews. But as Amazon's TOS evolved and they came out with new rules for what you're allowed to do, we kept changing our inserts. But we had an old shipment in Amazon that had one of the old inserts inside and Amazon did an audit. They found that insert and then they just shut down our account completely because of that. So it was really difficult because it was like a termination. So it's really hard to get back the account. And your account was shut down for three months. But a key lesson from this is during that time, you were still selling from other accounts. And that even when the worst things happen to you as an entrepreneur, there's usually some kind of a solution. And despite your account being shut down for three months, all this trauma in your third year ever selling on Amazon, I think you had just graduated high school, you did $2.5 million in sales. And that brings us to your fourth year selling online. And you learned a really big lesson from your account getting suspended. What was that? And how did you change things going into your fourth year? So I, I really learned that Amazon allows you to build a brand, but brands are so valuable and it's so much beyond Amazon. And the, the, the importance of diversifying your revenue is so important. So we started putting a lot more focus, even though we already in year, um, in year three already started selling on other platforms. In year four, we started putting a lot more focus on other platforms to sell our products on. And you, all that was awarded through Amazon. Like Amazon allowed us to build our product lines, allowed us to build our brand and invest all that money. But now we're able to sell it on other platforms. We started bringing in a lot of revenue from these other platforms. And what platforms were you selling on? So we were selling on walmart.com. We were selling on QVC, Zulily, Target.com, 
and um, Chewy for um, our fitness, our, our pet accessories. And all through all of those, like some of them had their ups and downs, but Walmart was something that was starting to really pick up and really sow traction that it could be a potential contender to Amazon was how I looked at it. So one of the biggest lessons I've learned from talking with you is that it's really not about what platform you're selling on, whether you're selling on Amazon or Walmart, it's really about the product. It's really about finding a product that you're passionate about, that you actually believe in. And then, yeah, Amazon's a good way to make a lot of money, but you can also list this product if it's a cool, unique product on all kinds of different platforms, right? Yeah, and the opportunity just grows from there. As you get your brand more out there, there's opportunities for you to sell it direct to consumer. So in year four, we also started selling on our website a lot. We started partnering a lot with influencers and uh, selling a lot of products that way. Actually, year four, um, we we sold we had a fitness product that we launched in collaborate with, collaboration with an influencer. And I remember within like 60 seconds of that product launching, it did like $20,000 in sales because just the reach that that influencer had. So yeah, there's so much opportunity once you have a brand and a unique um, story. And all this diversification paid off because in year four, you did over $6 million in sales between all those different platforms, which brings us into year five, where you did $10 million in sales. How did you do that in year five? How'd you go from 6 million to 10 million? So what was really interesting is now that I really had a good understanding for these other platforms, we started growing our brands on these other platforms. Yeah. So there was a lot of revenue brought from that. Our direct consumer channel started growing a lot. So we had a lot of sales there. And then we started actually selling a little bit to retail. Mm. So we had more revenue there. And then we also started another um, uh, partnership for another brand in another category that was doing a lot on Amazon already. And we were able to grow that a lot. Yeah. So collectively, we, you know, we used all what we knew and our strengths and our resources to really bring it to the next level, which was like cross the 10 million mark. And then the year after that, and the year after that, both those years, you did another 10 million and another $10 million. And that brings us into the three biggest mistakes that Michael made. And pay attention because the last mistake we're gonna talk about cost him $1 million. And it's a very common mistake. And the first mistake that you made that cost you over $500,000 was ordering too much inventory and sending too much inventory into the Amazon warehouse. Do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, so this was a mistake that happened to me and kept happening to me. And it took a while till I really learned my lesson from it. And what this is, is, you know, we would launch a new product or a lot of inventory and just send it all into Amazon. I'll be like, oh, based on the math, it could do this amount of sales and I don't want to run out of stock. So I'm going to send in a lot of units. And what happened is, you know, with one product, uh, you know, that we started launching it and then the product got taken down. So now we are stuck with a lot of units. We have to send back with another product. It took a longer time for it really picked up in sales. So our calculations were way off and we had a lot of extra units in Amazon. So we kept having these issues. And then we had another time where we actually sent in a lot of inventory directly from our manufacturer. And there was issues with like the labeling. Mm -hmm. And because it was such a big order, it was costing so much money. So what we really realized is that it makes much more sense to really calculate very conservatively for the start of how much you need. And yeah. once your product, and even if you're gonna have to start sending in much more units and more often, which is annoying to have, you rather send in a shipment once a month yeah. than have to send in every few days. But in the beginning, it's too hard to calculate exactly what the pace is gonna to be to send in those smaller shipments, but um, more often. And then once your product stabilizes, then you can make very calculated decisions on larger shipments. The second mistake you made that cost $150,000 is in regards to patents. And I know you were selling a product and someone came along that had a patent on it. Talk about that. Like what, what happened and what did you learn from that? So this was a very interesting mistake because we we started, we were looking to make it, to get into different categories. So the home and kitchen category. And we're like, we're gonna actually try to find a very unique product, but something that also is like very, very large potential. So not too unique. So we found this laundry basket. Laundry baskets were massive at the time. They'll have like 300,000 monthly searches for the main keyword. And uh, we found this unique, a lot of collapsible laundry baskets, but they were all collapsing weird. So we found this um, this other laundry basket, which had an extra bar of plastic in the middle, which allowed it to collapse much better. So I'm like, this is a great idea. There was one other seller selling it. And then we also saw like a big brand selling it. So we didn't think there was any patent issues because there was a couple brands selling it. We did a quick search. We couldn't find anything. It's very easy to do patent searches on USPTO. We started um, selling this product. It did so well. It was the number one in its category. Uh, we started getting really low on stock, so we ordered a really big shipment of it. And we had a full container, I think it was a container and a half actually coming. Right before it was landing at our port, I get an email um, with a cease and desist from one of the other sellers' um, legal firm telling us, you have to stop selling this product immediately. We have a utility patent that just went live for this product. 
not only you can't sell in the US, you can't sell in the UK and France and Germany and they had a lot of utility patents that just went live. I think it was the date was like April 1st or something like that. And yeah, now not only we couldn't resell that product anymore, we had all this extra inventory, which we ordered a lot. And yeah, we were stuck with it. So what did you do? You had all this extra inventory, this thousand, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars of inventory. What'd you do? So we did a couple things. They didn't have their patent live in Spain. So very interestingly, we sent it to Spain <laughs> and we did Amazon Spain there. And we also found like one wholesaler who bought some of it there because we were still able to sell it in Spain. And then um, we had to get rid of a lot of the units. So we got rid of a lot of those units. Just threw them out? Yeah. Or Wow. Have to throw it out because you can't really sell it. That brings us to the million dollar mistake. Pay attention. This is a very common mistake that a lot of people make. What was probably the biggest mistake that you've made in your entire Amazon career that cost you over a million dollars? What's that mistake? So after we launched our initial product that did really, really well, we launched another product that also did pretty well. We're like, we're going to go into this and we're going to do this really big. So we started looking into a lot of different products and we, I think it was like over like 12 products. We, we ordered at the same time these really big orders. And then we also decided we're gonna also sell them in like Amazon UK at the same time. We made these really big orders of a lot of these products because we had some money, um, some money saved up. And we're like, we're gonna go into this full force. And it was spread up between a lot of products. And what happened was, because it was spread up be between so many products, we didn't calculate how much investment we're gonna really need in advertising between these. We didn't gonna realize how long it's gonna take to make the money back on some of these to be able to reinvest. So a lot of these products didn't have potential as good potential but a lot of them had some potential they just needed the right love and attention but they couldn't have that because there were so many products at the same time and if we there's so much money to be made with just one product on amazon my business partner has made over 10 million dollars in profit from one product one product wow and this just shows like you don't need tons and tons of products you could be making so much money from just one product that if you're putting your focus on so many products, eventually, you know, there is a time to diverse and build out your catalog, but you want to do it in a really organized and responsible way. And this is why I always recommend selling a passion product. Find one product that you're really passionate about. Focus on that. You can diversify and sell it in a bunch of platforms online or wherever you want. And if you want to get started with your own Amazon business, I have a free five hour course that you can get just by clicking right here. It's a completely free YouTube video that I go in depth teaching you how to start your own Amazon business. So click on that video. I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.